How's it going, today I'm here with my WWE United Kingdom Championship Tournament 2018 review. Of course, the UK Championship Tournament aired on the WWE Network this afternoon. And overall, I gotta say, coming out of the show, I thought it was I thought it was a good show. You know, honestly, I think most people probably enjoyed it more than I did. Um, I don't know. To me, I, I just guess British wrestling isn't my cup of tea. I just really wasn't digging most of it. Not, not saying it was a bad show. I did feel like the show had a lot of good matches. However, to me, it was just that good matches. Nothing really stood out besides the, the final two matches. The final two matches, to me, were definitely what saved the show. At least for me, in my opinion. But everything else, like I said, was just good. But just nothing really stood out. No such urgency really from anybody besides maybe a handful of people. Or maybe a few guys um, really, you know, showed that urgency that I was like, okay, this person definitely wants to go somewhere. But I don't know. I just feel like there's a sense of complacency with some of the people. And I know just the presentation as well uh, compared to last year's just wasn't there. I feel like last year's it definitely made it a bigger deal. They made sure you know who every single guy was. Here, they kind of just presented people with you and didn't really give much backstory to each person like they did last year. So, I thought even the presentation of this year's wasn't all that well. And just the crowd meeting as well. Like, 90% of the time, the crowd was muted. So, you're just watching a match that dead silent. So, it definitely, you know, affected the show in a way, if you ask me. But, like I said, nonetheless, it was still a good show. Nothing to take away from it. I did enjoy it. You know, at last year's, I thought last year's was better. Um, especially, you know, day two. Last year's were, of course, you pretty much had the quarterfinals and, you know, like you had today. Uh, that definitely was a better show than this show, if you ask me. But, like I said, you know, still enjoyed it. Not Nothing against it. Maybe just isn't my cup of tea. I'm not really too sure. But it was still a good show from my perspective. And I still did enjoy for what it was. Of course, the opening match you had was the first quarterfinals match, which was Zach Gibson taking on Gentleman Jack Gallagher. This was a very good opening match here. You know, right from the get-go, I really wasn't into this match. I felt like it was very slow. You know, uh, Gallagher just joking around with Gibson and Gibson, you know, trying to work on the arm of Jack Gallagher. It just was very slow, and I just really wasn't getting into the groove of this match. The match started picking up, started getting some nice spots in. You had some nice back-and-forth action for both Gibson and Gallagher. Gallagher started getting that nice fire comeback, where he thought he was going to win some points, hit a huge headbutt um, on Gal on uh, Gibson, sorry, followed by a uh, missile drop kick in the corner, which was a nice near fall right there. But the ending came with, you know, Gallagher trying to go for a uh, head bump the top rope. Gibson got his foot up, blocked in the shanky gates for the submission victory. So defeats Jack Gallagher in the first quarterfinals match. Like I said, it's paced off very slowly at the beginning. Started picking up Gallagher and Gibson had a really good back and forth action match. I had some nice spots, you know, Gallagher doing a suicide dive on the outside. Uh, Gibson just, you know, just being booed out of the building. This man was absolutely hated uh, in this tournament. But uh, made for a very good opening match for, you know, towards the end of it. So I definitely enjoyed that one, which will lead into the second quarterfinals match between Joe Cafe and Dave Mastiff. Right from the get-go, both men were just, you know, hitting shoulder blocks, trying to do the, you know, who can knock who down first uh, gimmick until they both went to the outside, which led to, I believe, Cafe being knocked down? Or I'm, I'm not too sure who won the uh, shoulder block on the outside. But um, both men definitely showcased their strengths. I thought Cafe definitely looked good in terms of just deadlifting uh, Mastiff around. They actually gave him a belly to belly, um, which I thought was absolutely awesome to Mastiff. Mastiff was showcasing strengths as well. Just deadlifting Cafe up into a, uh, into a German suplex, which I thought was nice. Uh, going for the corner senton, I missed that. Cafe ended up destroying Mastiff with a, uh, with a discount Lariat for the win. So Cafe advances to the second final, or the uh, semifinals. Like I said, you know, pretty damn good back and forth hostage division match. Not much to it, but two big men going at it and absolutely killing it. So definitely enjoyed it. And of course, after the match, you know, um, Cafe was interviewed by Kathy Kelly. And he pretty much just said that, you know, he's going to win this and whatnot. So your, your typical post-match tournament promo, really, from Cafe. But um, definitely it was a good match between him and uh, Dave Mastiff. From there, I'm going to go to Flash Morgan Webster taking on Jordan Devlin. Jordan Devlin was someone that I was not impressed with last year's tournament. I thought he did very poorly. And over the last year, I've heard, you know, a lot of things about him. I've heard how much he's improved, and I thought this was his chance here. Didn't really showcase it that much, because honestly, they were really focused on Flash Morgan Webster in this match, I thought. You know, Flash Morgan Webster really was the person getting his stuff in. He was the one doing all the aerial assault on the outside. You know, he did the um, two suicide dives, followed by the senton over the top rope um, on the Devlin. Uh, he was just really showcasing his charisma as well. Uh, you know, Jordan Devlin did, got some good stuff in, hit a, you know, Spanish fly at the top rope, followed by a super kick for a nice near fall right there. But towards the end, uh, Devlin went for a uh, moonsault, missed. Morgan uh, countered it, into, or was able to hit a, I'm not sure what his finish was called, but it's kind of like a Destino, where it was kind of just floating him into reverse DDT. Um, that's pretty much what it was. Hit it on Devlin for the 1-2-3 to advance to the semifinals. So, definitely was a fun match, though. It was pretty much a sprint. It was like 6-7 minutes long, so not too much uh, in time. It was still definitely um, a damn good match, I thought, from both them. And then we go to Travis Banks versus uh, Ashton Smith in the final quarterfinals match. This was fine for what it was. Definitely the weakest of the, th the four matches of the quarterfinal matches, I should say. Uh, Travis Banks, I 
felt showed great urgency though. I feel like his selling, just the way he acted and really took control of this match was good. Ashton Smith, I just feel like he was just there. No one really cared about him. He just felt like a filler guy. And, you know, he didn't really do much this match. And Travis Banks was able to showcase his agility, uh, his speed from his strikes, and, you know, just really um, just, you know, working over Ashton Smith and ended up getting the victory after a uh, disaster kick followed by the uh, um, the God's Last Gift, which I'm the name's going blank in my head, the Kiwi Buzzsaw, or not the Kiwi Buzzsaw, that's his nickname, um, the Kiwi Crusher, sorry, uh, for the finish to uh, advance to the semifinals. So that was, like I said, it was an alright match. You know, I thought Travis Banks definitely looked good, but Ashley Smith kind of just there. Uh, from there, I'm going to the number one contenders triple threat match for the next women's championship. Of course, Tony Storm taking on Isla Dawn, taking on Killer Kelly. Originally, it was supposed to be a Fatal 4 match with Jeannie, but um, of course, she got injured the taping, so they ended up axing uh, axing her and just going with a triple threat match. It was actually funny because during the entrances, uh, you hear the announcer announce it as a Fatal 4 way, but yet it's a triple threat. So I thought that was pretty um, bad editing on their part for that one. But this is real quick, right from the get go. Uh, Don and uh, Kelly just teamed on. Tony Storm took her out. They went at it for a little bit. Uh, Isla Dawn definitely impressed, if you ask me. I thought her strikes and agility came off very, very well. Uh, Tony Storm ended back in the fray, ended up going off on both of them, and ended up pinning um, uh, Isla Dawn after the Storm Breaker. So a very short match. Like I said, not really much to it. And uh, Tony Storm or Shannon Baylor's on for tomorrow night for the UK Championship Special. So uh, I'm excited for that one. That should be a good match. But yeah, like I said, not really much to that match. Uh, Triple H came out for a promo, pretty much, you know, announced the launching of NXT UK, uh, which we all knew about, you know, since last week, since they announced it, the taping, so, you know, pretty good, pretty good summing here, not really much to it, though, besides the announcement, uh, then, of course, we lead into our first um, semifinals match, which was Zach Gibson taking on Flash Morgan Webster, this was a very short match, not really much to it, uh, it was a sprint, it was like a four-minute sprint, so he didn't really get much out of the match, besides some good spots, uh, Flash Morgan Webster hit that beautiful hurricane on the outside, on a Gibson, did his uh, dives on the outside, but Gibson actually caught him at one point into like a uh, twisting suplex on the outside, so that was a nice spot, which actually led into the finish. Uh, teased out a count on finish, Webster barely broke the count of 10, but once he got in, uh, Gibson locked in the, the uh, shanky key, uh, gates uh, for this mission victory over Flash Morgan Webster, so very short match, but it was a very good sprint if you ask me, really enjoyed it, that one. Uh, from there, go to uh, Travis Banks taking on Joe Cafe in the final semifinals match. This was really good here as well. I thought the selling and just the story of this match was really good. Of course, Cafe selling it back from his match against Mastiff, and then you know Travis Banks really working on that, and just the selling of Travis Banks I thought was tremendous as well. I thought these two went out there and told a really good story and had some good back and forth action. Just the urgency from both men uh, was just a different match than the match we've seen in tournaments so far. So I definitely liked what these two had to deliver. And Travis Bank getting the surprise victory after, you know, after, with a cradle on Joe Cafe it was definitely was surprising. And uh, so Travis Banks defeats Joe Cafe. Like I said, you know, pretty good match. Definitely different than the leather match we've seen before. And of course, Cafe being pissed off, attacks Travis Banks, throws his left arm into the post, which is the arm that Zach Gibson has been working on in all of his previous matches. So it definitely plays into the main event with Travis Banks injuring his left arm due to the assault from Joe Cafe. Cafe hits him with a discus larry to end the uh, attack after that. So um, great storytelling right there to lead in the main event with Zach Gibson and Travis Banks in the finals. So definitely was a damn good match between him and Cafe. And then we go to which I thought was the best match on, on the card, which was the six-man tag team match. Of course, the Undisputed Era taking on British Strong Style. This was a fun fucking match. This was a lot of fun. This was like a 13, 14 minute just all out sprint. Every man just going at it. Um, a lot of great spots here. Uh, just right from the get-go, you had, you know, O'Reilly going at it with Dunn, or Cole going at it with Dunn, and, uh, you know, Roderick Strong tagged in. Or not Dunn, who was legal? I think it was Tyler Bates. Tyler Bates, sorry. Um, right from the get-go, and then, of course, you know, Bate and Roddy went at it until, you know, Tyler Bate baited Roddy into the corner. Dunn tacked in. Dunn, you know, uh, just went off Roderick Strong. And you had a lot of great stuff from all teams here. You know, Undisputed Era took over for a little bit until a hot tag was made. Trent Seven got his stuff in. You know, he ended up hitting, you know, chops on every single person, which was followed up with a phenomenal DDT on Adam Cole for a nice near fall. Uh, then, of course, Undisputed Era took over for a little bit. Uh, Tyler Bate looked absolutely phenomenal, as well as Pete Dunne. Uh, there was a great spot where just everyone's in the ring and just, you know, it was just mayhem was going across. Everyone's hitting their stuff on each other. Everyone was laid out at one point where, you know, all six men were laid on the ground and crowd was training. This was awesome. Uh, it, was, it was just a lot of great stuff there. And then, of course, had a great spot where which was almost towards the finish where uh, Undisputed Air was just annihilating Trent Seven, which, you know, Kyle Riley hit him with the uh, 
the kick to the back of the head, followed by the elbow smash, followed by a, a jumping knee from Roderick Strong, followed by the last shot and super kick, or super kick and last shot by from Adam Cole on a trend seven for a nice near fall right there before Pete Dunne broke it up. Uh, just a hot finish going on around. Uh, you know, Pete Dunne ended up doing a, a moonsault off of the second rope on the outside to Roderick Strong and Adam Cole to take them out, which led to um, Kyle Riley receiving a, a dragon suplex followed by a lariat from Tyler Bate uh, for the finish. So that was a combo with, you know, Tyler Bate springboarding off the ropes, uh, hitting um, Kyle Riley with a, with a lariat followed by Trent Seven, uh, throwing him back into a dragon suplex for the finish for the one, two, three. So, un, uh, for, so British Strong South defeats Undisputed Era. Like I said, this six-man tag was a hell of a lot of fun. Uh, definitely go out of your way to see that. Just both teams looked absolutely tremendous. Everyone looked great. And um, it was a lot of fun. And the crowd was red hot into it as well. So uh, if you're watching anything on the show, definitely the six-man tag. Amazing stuff. Definitely enjoyed it. Like I said, best match in the show if you ask me. And then, of course, before the main event, we had Shawn Michaels coming out, pretty much talking about the uh, Royal Albert Hall, uh, pretty much talking about how he was in the first match when WWE first went there for their first show back in 1991. So uh, pretty much just putting it over and whatnot to the uh, going to the main event, which, of course, was the number one contenders 2018 WWE United Kingdom Championship Tournament Finals between Zach Gibson and Travis Banks. Travis Banks, of course, coming out injured with his you know shoulder taped up. And these two went out there and had a great finals. You know, like I said, definitely was the second best match on the show besides the six-man tag, if you ask me. I just thought the urgency from both of them were great. You know, Travis Banks was on the shoulder. Of course, Zach Gibson was working on that shoulder the entire match. But Travis Banks was fighting back. You know, he had the fighting spirit and definitely worked through the injury. Uh, was just wailing on Zach Gibson for a good while. You know, did some suicide dives on the outside to, you know, even though he was injuring himself in the process, he knew what, what was at risk or what was at stake here. So he didn't care. Fought through the injury. Uh, you know, Zach Gibson locked in the shaky gates a handful of times in this match. But, you know, Travis Banks was able to fight through the pain and get to the ropes before it. I uh, had some great near falls with Zach, uh, with um, Gibson, or not Gibson, sorry, Travis Banks hitting the um, disaster kick followed by the Kiwi Crusher for uh, a nice near fall right there. I thought the fans thought that was it for sure, but it was not able to secure the victory. And then, of course, Zach Gibson was able to lock in the uh, Shaky Gates one last time, uh, rolled him around the ring to make sure he did not get to the ropes. In the middle of the ring, Travis Banks submits, and Zach Gibson is your winner of the 2018 UK Championship Tournament. Like I said, that was a hell of a finals. The story was great, you know, with Travis Banks selling. I thought he did a great, you know, great job. It's, to me, in my opinion, Travis Banks definitely was the MVP of this tournament. He definitely, just the facial expressions, the selling, uh, the urgency, you know, just everything he did in all his matches, I thought he played greatly, and he definitely stood the most, if you ask me, out of everyone. And as uh, Zach Gibson wins the match, gets booted out of the building, Triple H, Johnny Saint, and Shawn Michaels come out to congratulate him. Pete Dunne comes out, they have a stare down, and uh, that's what ends the show. Of course, tomorrow night, or tomorrow afternoon, I should say, is Pete Dunne and uh, Zach Gibson for the UK Championship. So that's going to be part of the NXT UK Championship special. That should be going tomorrow, as well as, you know, Undisputed Era taking on Mustache, Mustache Mountain for the tag team titles. So tomorrow's show should be a hell of a show. I honestly do think it'll be better than this one. Like I said, I didn't dislike this show. I just... I don't know, I guess it was my cup of tea. I really wasn't feeling involved or really emotionally emotionally involved in anything. The only thing I was really involved in was the two the final two matches. Those were the two matches where I felt like I was into the show, like, okay, I'm loving what I'm watching. Besides that, like I said, everything wasn't bad. Uh, everything was good, but I just felt like nothing stood out. I just felt like there's a, a you know a sense of complacency with a lot of people and there really wasn't much of urgency in terms of, you know, performing, you know, outperforming everyone. Uh, then I saw what, you know, Travis Banks was the person I saw it with, where he, he, I legitimately felt like he was trying to, you know, put on the best performance he possibly could, while with everyone else, I kind of felt like they were kind of just there, you know, I just, that's just personally how I felt. Like I said, still a good show, definitely enjoyed it, just not as much as last year's. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, if you guys did, please like below, and of course, till tomorrow night for my, or tomorrow afternoon, I should say, for my NXT UK Championship review, I'll see you guys, and thank you guys for watching the video. With the dragons, are we back up in here? Spit fire from the back of in ears. Coming straight from the belly of the beast that's in the back of your ear. Whispering, that's got you crap in your ear. This panic of fear is